Hi everybody, it's Jalessa again, and today we're gonna to talk about tubes and tube settings and how to find the right tubes for your stones. So let's get started. Before we get started on this project, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about finding the right tube setting. Um, one of the things you have to look for is the outer diameter and inner diameter of the tubing that you'd like to use for the stone setting. Um, in today's example, we are going to be setting this 6.12 millimeter sky blue topaz into a tube setting. And so what I need to find is a tube with an outer diameter larger than 6.12, let's say six and a half or seven. And then I need the inner diameter of the tubing to be smaller than the 6.12, preferably about a millimeter smaller. We wanna make sure that there's enough meat on the tubing to actually set the stone and have enough to uh, rub over the top of the setting or the girdle of the stone. So in this particular case, you can see the wall here is not very thick and that's something that we're trying to find is a thick walled piece of tubing. Here's another example of a very thin wall that we would not be able to do a tube setting in because the moment you take the burr and start burring into it, you're going to lose all of the metal that you need in order to do the setting. Same thing with this particular one. It's a little bit thicker than a large tube, but it's not thick enough to do a setting if we were to try and do a setting in this particular type of a, a tube. However, this is a good tube. We've got a really thick wall. We've also got the outer diameter that's probably larger than our stone. This particular stone um, is a little bit bigger, so I'm gonna show you using a different stone, which is smaller on this copper tubing. Here's a small peridot. And with this, what I'm looking for when you set the stone on top is you're looking for a small, sliver of metal around the outside of the stone so that you can see that the tubing is larger than your actual the girdle of the stone the diameter of the girdle of the stone so that's what you're looking for and i'll make sure to have a photo there so you can see the small um, rim of metal around this peridot stone so now i want to talk to you about finding tubing. Um, tubing can be found in large packs. It can be found in single lengths. Um, I believe this one I got from Rio Grande and it's a seamless tube that I bought by the ounce. Um, this particular one is six and a half millimeters on the outside diameter and it has a wall thickness of 0.635, which means that it's a little bit more than a half a millimeter. I generally prefer it to be a little bit thicker, but um, this will work for the tube setting we're gonna do today. These tubes I bought, it, I think in 2013, <laughs> when silver was much cheaper, it was $8.33 a piece for these. So I bought a whole bunch of them and they're different sizes. Like this one is a five millimeter outside diameter with a 4.1 millimeter inside diameter. This one is 6.0 with a 5.1 inner diameter. So there's a lot of different um, sh sizes that you can get and you also can buy different shapes. And if you don't feel like you can find the tubing that you want, you can always make an individual setting. One thing I'll say about making an individual setting is if the stone is uh, smaller than six millimeters, I wouldn't recommend trying to make your own setting. I'd, I'd recommend find a tubing that will work. So today we're gonna to use this tubing in order to set our sky blue topaz. So the first thing I wanna do is test my stone on this tubing. And remember I said earlier, we're looking for a small rim of metal around the diameter of the girdle that's actually showing so that we know we have enough metal or enough meat of metal to press over the top of the girdle to hold the stone in place. So what I do, is I take the stone, place it over the top, and then check it. And this has um, a good amount of metal around it, so this will be a good setting. The next thing I wanna do is measure the height of the stone with my calipers, because it's important to cut the length of tubing that's going to keep the coulee or the bottom of the stone from sticking out the back, because if you're making a ring, 
you don't want the stone to be touching your customer's skin. So the important thing is to measure the height of your stone. And this stone is 4.2 millimeters, I'm sorry, 4.22 millimeters in height. So I want to have at least a five millimeter height on my tubing. So I'm gonna go ahead and set my calipers five millimeters and set this aside so I don't drop it and I'm going to take my tubing and mark it with a sharpie so that I can see my line once I get it lined up I'm going to take my calipers and I'm going to mark five millimeter mark on my tubing. Okay. Now, instead of taking my jeweler saw and just cutting this um, and risking the fact that it's gonna be crooked or not even, I'm gonna use my tube cutting jig. And the first thing I wanna do is set my tube height or my tube length to that mark that I made at five millimeters. Now that that's set, I can go ahead and cut my piece of tubing. It helps to have your saw ready and to not drop your tubing. Okay, let's try this again. <laughs> So now I have a piece of tubing that is taller than the height of my stone. I'll check it by putting my stone down, checking the height, and yes, it's taller than the height of my stone. So now I'm ready to solder this onto a back plate and get ready to set my stone. Okay, my tube setting is out of the pickle, and I want to look at my stone again, not that it's changed anything since I soldered it, but I wanted to show you I've got these cute little salt cell cellars that I keep my stone in. You wanna keep your stone in a place where you're not gonna lose it. I find mine falling on the floor all the time, and to save myself the heartache, I got those little salt cellars. So I have this tool with a little bit of wax on the end of it so that I can pick up my stone and set it on top. And yes, of course, it still looks good. The only problem is my setting is crooked, so I need to flatten it out. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my file and flatten out my setting real quick. Okay, looks good now. Now, what I wanna do is use a setting burr. The reason why I'm using a setting burr in a tube setting versus a heart burr like I did in the flush setting is because I wanna have straight walls on the side to be able to press it over the girdle of my stone. And the easiest way to do that is to use my setting burr instead of my heart burr. Um, the other thing too is it doesn't take away as much material as fast, so it's a little bit easier on the actual setting process itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in my flex shaft, get a little bit of burr lube, and then start to cut my seat. Now, one thing I wanna make sure that I am going straight up and down on this because I don't want 
to chew away too much metal on the outsides. Second thing is this burr is the same diameter or smaller than the diameter of my stone. So you don't want it too big. And if it's smaller, that's okay. You can always open up the seat a little bit. This one just happens to be six millimeters, which is a little bit smaller than my 6.12 stone. God awful noise. Generally means I'm going too fast. Keep using loop burr lube to, to keep it from sticking. Okay, the other thing I want to do is check my stone. Nope, not ready. You're just going to keep working at it until you get your stone deep enough get the girdle deep enough to be able to actually press the metal over the outside of the stone. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and keep working on this until I get it right. Now the metal's gonna get hot, so be very careful with burning your fingers. <laughs> Should be getting pretty close. And I got it in there and it's straight. There was a slight little click so I know it's being held in very firmly. Now the next thing I can do is two things. I can use a bezel rocker to push the sides over, or I can use what they call a bezel punch. And a bezel punch essentially looks like this, and it comes with a handle. So you press the punch inside the handle, you move over the top of the setting in a circular motion, or you can take your... Um, chasing hammer and gently tap the outside of it. I don't necessarily like using this punch, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you how it works. You wanna find a punch that's a slight bit larger than the diameter of your um, tubing so that you can get a good press on it. And what you do is you hold it over the top and you press down and make circular motions. And you'll see that the edges of my metal is over the top of the girdle of my stone. The problem with these punches, which is why I don't like to use them, is they aren't always deep enough on the inside to not touch the stone, so you, risk, you run the risk of actually damaging your stone. Now, I could find one that's a little bit smaller that one was a six or 7.75. This one is a six and a half, so it should be a little bit larger. I don't like to use that. I'm afraid I'm gonna. First, I'd like to apologize for the way the last segment cut off. Uh, somebody tried to call me in the middle of filming, so unfortunately the video cut off. The point I was trying to make is that if you use a bezel punch, you run the risk of cracking the stone or scratching the table because of the rotating motion. And the reason for that is because the bezel punch itself isn't always deep enough to miss the table of the stone. So instead, I like to use a plain old bezel rocker like I would for a regular cabochon and a burnisher to, to shine the actual setting once it's in. So hopefully this video was helpful for you. And if so, give me a like. And if you got questions, leave me a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel in order to see more videos like this. Thank you, everybody. Bye.